Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Tolius Airbus A321 and today we have part three in our little series what is the Airbus. This time we're going to look at direct law and its implications for us as pilots. If you haven't already seen part one and two where I talk about normal law and alternate law I highly recommend it as it will give you the background uh, information on what we're looking at here today with direct law. I am a real world Airbus pilot but as always this is not for any real world use it's just for our home simulations and hopefully to give you some extra context on the flying the Airbus in X-Plane. So let's get started. Today we are in Rome, Fiumicino again, Lima India, Romeo Foxtrot, expecting to fly the ILS onto runway 16 left. So in, in my previous videos we've looked at how we end up in alternate law which is where we're going to begin this uh, video today. So here we are set up for an approach, and for whatever reason, we could end up with some downgrades that lead us to end up in alternate law. So I'm going to turn off these two ADRs, the air data, and I'm going to switch it to captain to source three. And now let's get control of the airplane. Bring the thrust levers to manual thrust. Turn off the flight directors. Although, as you saw, they were providing some information. So if you have them available, there's nothing to stop you using them. I'm just showing you uh, how we end up there. So we could still have out heading. It depends on which failure you have as to whether you'd be able to use them. So if things are working, then that's good. And you might try and keep them working. And we can see here on the status page, alternate law, protections lost. And we talked about what that means uh, in the other video. I'm not going to run through the full ECAM with you today. Um, but essentially, we also have no auto thrust unless I try that and as you can see no not working so flying manually as you remember we've lost our protections but we still have some stability so if I get slow in this mode uh, the airplane will lower the nose slightly as we get towards our stall warner that's not to say it will always do that as I said there is a version of alternate law where it won't do that so it's very easy to miss that but what we're going to look at the, today is direct law so how do we end up in direct law well, it'll pretty much be because we have ended up in alternate law in flight and when we put the wheels down, the airplane goes into what's called direct law. And it's called direct law because we are simply controlling the flight controls directly. So it becomes like a conventional airplane. As you can see on the PFD, I know I'm in alternate law because of these amber crosses showing me that the protections are lost so I can go past these bank angles, past these pitch angles. What we're going to do is we're going to fly this ILS uh, as if we were and we'll have a look at how that impacts us. Uh, in direct law. I'm going to configure early as well to give you a clear idea of uh, what direct law actually means. So let's get started with that. So I'm going to activate the approach phase. Uh, it already has. We're tuned in on the ILS, which is here, as you can see, and we're going to start point towards it. And I'm just going to fly down that line. So let's start slowing down. So let's come back to 160 knots and flat 2 in alternate law, and then configure from there. This isn't necessarily how you'd fly the approach. This is just going to be um, for us to have a look at how the airplane handles. So flaps one now. And we'll roll out onto that intercept. As we remember from alternate law, roll is direct now. So my inputs on the side stick directly control the ailerons and roll spoilers. The result of that is if we're going faster, they could be very sensitive, more sensitive than we're used to, because in normal law, we just command a rate of roll. But now it's direct, so it'll just be quite twitchy. So you have to be careful with that. Let's go to flap two. Flying level. And let's descend down to 5,000 feet. We're going to fly this approach. So Auxeru is at 2,500, but there is a lot of terrain beneath us. So I'll put 2,500 for now. And as you can see, and that's not to say uh, you would actually do that at this point. This is just entirely to have a look at the, uh, the airplane. As you can see, we're still in alternate law, flying flat two. And what's going to happen when I put the gear down, we're going to see a few things change. And we'll talk about those as it happens. So let's just get ourselves pointing roughly towards Rome. There we go. OK. And let's put the gear down. So gear comes down, we get another master caution, and we get this message. Flight control, direct law, protections are lost. Max B320. I can clear that. And we can see here, direct law, cat one only. So what has happened? Well, 
Now you can see the airplane is no longer holding our pitch or our G. So our side stick is not commanding a G force. So if you watch here, I have to pull back on the side stick, get the nose up, then when I let go, the airplane puts the nose back down. Whereas in alternate law, it would obviously uh, adjust to try and maintain one G, just like in direct law. Oh, sorry, in normal law. <laughs> in direct law, it's just commanding the elevators. If I bring up the flight control page, you'll see this now. So if I move back on the side stick, they move up, neutral, bit down. Same with the ailerons, they just move exactly where the side stick moves them. The result of that is we need to trim. So we become like a normal airliner. And I can do that with a trim wheel. So I've got it bound down to my joystick. So I'll just move the trim up. And there we go. Just like any airliner. A little bit different in the Airbus. We don't you don't feel the pressure on the side stick, it's just a bit of resistance built into the side stick, so that's all you can base it on. So if you're having to hold the side stick, say you're holding it back constantly, then you know you need to probably trim back a bit to relieve that pressure. So as we can see, it's a relatively sensitive aeroplane now, and it's pretty conventional. If I put on loads of thrust, as the engines spool up, I'd expect the nose to, to rise a little bit, and there it goes. So the nose rises immediately, the speed increases, so we're out of trim, so obviously the nose will also rise for that reason. And as you take the power back to idle, you'd expect the nose to drop. Partly for the speed and partly because there's a pitch power couple now. So when you adjust your thrust on the engines in direct law, you're going to have to adjust your trim as well because you're changing that moment because there's this force underneath the centre of gravity down here at the engines. So these are a few things that are, are quite different, quite normal for, for most aeroplanes but unusual for the Airbus. How do I know I'm in direct law? Well, aside from the ECAM message, we get this big giveaway message on the PFD, use man pitch trim in amber. And that's telling us uh, exactly that. We have to use the trimmer. It's reminding us that the airplane won't trim for us or maintain 1G. So what are some more implications of this? Well, we typically land flap 3 uh, in this configuration. So I'll do that now. GPS landing flap 3. It's on there and I'll change it in here. If you end up in an abnormal situation like this, there is a whole host of procedures that Airbus pilots will use using the uh, quick reference handbook. Um, wherever your airline keeps that, it could be on your iPads also, uh, which will guide you through it for performance reasons and calculating your approach speed and so on. And here we are then looking at a pretty stable but still downgraded Airbus where we have uh, lost our protections. Something to note as well, we don't have any uh, low speed or high speed protections now, so if we were to increase the nose and let the speed wash off, we will end up in a stall. So I'll do that now, idle thrust, and I'll have to hold the nose up. I'll have to trim back as well, bring the PFD up, and we'll use the st same stall recovery actions as in my last video. Um, so I won't spend too much time talking about them today, but it is exactly the same, but obviously the flap's already out, so we don't need to put out flap one. But you keep putting back, and I have to keep trimming back to, to enable this to happen. Not something you would do, hopefully someone would spot that the speed is reducing. But there's no stability, the airplane won't lower the nose or anything like that. It would just get the stall worn out. And there's stall, I have control, lowering the nose, wings to level, out of the stall warner. Gradually start increasing the thrust. Check the speed brakes are retracted. Flaps are already at one. Altimeter setting. Gently recovering to smooth flight. So here we are now. We're back with the wheels up. So we are in alternate law. When you raise the gear, the airplane should return to alternate law. It won't stay indirect. And we're going to descend down onto our ILS. So applying this manually in alternate law. What I want to do as we just get ourselves onto the localizer, is show you how we might consider configuring. So the platform's 2,500 feet. So I'm going to set the inbound track and then descend to 2,500, which will be somewhere there. Inbound track was 159. And what might make your life easier in this situation is if you were to reduce the speed back to VAP. So I've got GPS flap 3, config 3 in here, and we set it up there. So if I have the airplane already reduced, and remember we're in alternate law here, so the airplane is still trimming. I'm not doing that, you can see the wheel is moving on its own. 
and I'm getting myself onto the ILS. So we're on the low fly and the glide slope. If I was to put the gear down now, the airplane will stop trimming and I'll have to start manually trimming. If I reduce the speed, it'll be closer to the actual trim. And I could also put out flap three. So I'm gonna do that now. So flaps to three. Let's get ourselves onto that glide slope and localizer a bit better. And now, a bit more thrust off. Keep moving over to the localizer. We've got a nice visual picture out the window. And now if I let the thrust stabilize, so flat three landing, probably somewhere in the, the mid 40s with the gear down. If I put the gear down now, so there goes the gear. I need to manually trim. But if I add the thrust on and then leave it without trimming at all, it shouldn't be too far off. You don't have to do that, but it may help. There are some failures where you can't do that. It's not recommended because it may give you a uh, another warning. But it, it can be an idea just to be a little bit slower. For example, if you were 200 knots at this point trying to configure and you put the gear down, then you'd make your life very difficult as you have to do quite a lot of retrimming. And here we go. So what have we got the thrust at 49? You'll get that next ECAM as you put the gear down because you've changed the control law. So you definitely want to make sure you're aware. And it's just crucial that you're aware of which law you're in because the risk now is that, yeah, we absolutely could stall. So we do the final bits for landing. And what's the difference for landing? Well, basically nothing. You just fly exactly the same as in my landing tutorial. Looking out down the runway, bringing the airplane into a normal flare position and flare as you would. It's, there are minor differences in the field, but basically it's, it's the same technique. More important is the go around where you need to consider that when we add the thrust, the airplane will try and raise the nose because of that pitch power couple I talked about. So there's no automatic accounting for that. So when I add the thrust, the nose will come up very quickly on its own. So I'll need to be ready for that and may have to even use some uh, nose down input on the side stick. Now, so far my experience with the TOLIS is it doesn't quite replicate the pitch power couple as aggressively as I'd expect in the real airplane. Um, but we shall see shortly. So if I put the go around altitude, let's say that we ask air traffic control, because of our downgraded airplane, we'll ask for 5,000 feet, just to make it a bit simpler. And now we decide that we're unstable or we're no longer happy with this approach. So we're going to do our usual. So I put thrust levers to toga, go around flaps, get rid of that checklist. And you'll see I'm not doing anything to the side stick now. I've done nothing. And you can see that that nose rises really quickly. Flaps come in a stage and it rises all the way up. So I'm going to have to put nose down on the side stick to keep that nose because it rises so fast. Positive climb, gear can come up. And that's really important because now the gear's coming up. You hear that ding, and you can see that we've lost our used man pitch trim, and we've gone into alternate law. The amber crosses, and none of that man, man pitch trim. And now we're back into G, so I no longer have to trim. So there's a, a direct law go around, the risk being that as the thrust comes on, the nose could come up, and it's possible even to get a stool warner if you're not careful with that. One thing you can do uh, is maybe use a little bit of forward trim just before you go around if you have a chance. And that might help you control that. And here we are now on final approach for our landing. Get back over to the center line and we'll have a look. And as I said, using the same technique, varying at 30 feet. Don't make any big corrections on final approach if you can help it, because if you change the power too much or anything like that, you're going to find that you've just got to retrim the airplane. So keeping it nice and small corrections. And as you can see, the airplane's now trimmed. I'm not doing anything to the side stick. And just like any airplane, if you get it trimmed correctly with the right power setting on final approach, it doesn't need too many inputs to keep it keep it where you want it. Adding a little bit of thrust here. And just going for a normal flap three landing technique. It's worth remembering flap three. In my experience, one thing to note on the TOLIS on final approach is it is probably a little bit more sensitive. So the flight controls, as they're being controlled directly, have the potential to feel a little bit more twitchy than uh, it would in normal law. But aside from that, we're still trying to use the same technique, getting that flare in by 30 feet. 
once we're on the grounds, we lose that man pitch stream message. We're effectively in just ground law. It's basically a version of direct law anyway. Should move that checklist. So there we go. Nothing, no, no great uh, big deal about the landing. Just using our same technique to look out and flare at the appropriate point. In direct law, we have no G load protection either. So in alternate law, we do have it, but now we don't. So uh, we could overstress the airframe in pitch by pulling back too much or putting the nose down too much. So the G protection is no longer there. It is just a direct command of the airframe and the flight controls, as you'd expect in a more conventional airliner. That's all for today's video on direct law in the uh, TOLIS Airbus A321. I hope it's been interesting and maybe given you some extra uh, bits and tips that you weren't aware of before. There'll be another video in this series, at least one more, where we're going to look at mechanical backup, the, the final sort of uh, resource in the Airbus. Thank you very much for your support and for continuing to watch the channel. There'll be more live streams coming soon. Otherwise, I hope you all keep very well and safe. See you again in another video soon. Thank you.